Hey YouTube, so if you've just followed on from the last video, in the last video we took a look at Packer and actually got it to type in some commands for us. But at this stage, we don't actually have a machine that is workable. So in this video, we're going to take a look at a slightly more complicated Packer template, but this template will actually give us a machine that we could boot up. It's not quite ready for us to use as a server for a lab, but we could boot this machine up if we want it. So again, on the left hand side, you can see that we've got a command window. It's in a directory that I use to keep my packet templates. You can see I keep my stuff in Dropbox. It just makes it a little bit easier working on multiple machines at the same time. And on the right hand side, we have a packer template, which is filled out with a bit more stuff in it this time. So let's take a look at the boot command that we're using this time to get an idea of what's actually changed. So you'll see this time the boot command is actually quite a bit bigger. These are the commands that we will need to type in order to get Ubuntu to boot up for us and do the install. So if we take a look at um, some Ubuntu stuff for a second and talk about a thing called a pre-seed file. Now, when Ubuntu does its installs, it reads a file called a pre-seed file, which answers all of the questions that you generally would have to answer during the install. Things like, what should the format on the disk look like? What packages do you want to install? What time? What users? That kind of stuff. All of the questions are laid out, and the pre-seed file basically just lists the answers for all of them. A lot of operating systems have this style of installation so CentOS uses something called Kickstarter or Red Hat style systems use something called a kickstart file and Windows uses something called a answer file if I remember correctly in this case we're going to be using a preseed file so we need a way to get the preseed file onto our machine and Luckily for us, Packer actually gives us a HTTP server to host the file on for us. So if we take a look at this section over here, as I've highlighted, you can see over there we've got some variables which point to an HTTP server for us. The HTTP server is hosted, like I said, in Packer on your machine. And the directory that is hosted is this over here. So if we bring up the directory, you can see this is the directory structure over here. You can see inside of the HTTP directory, I've got a couple of directories that hold the files for me. So I've got an Ubuntu with a pre-seed file and a Ubuntu 6.10 with a pre-seed file. We'll take a look at those in a second. The other things that we've changed is now we have a post processor over here. So post processor is what tells Packet how to process the box at the end of the run. What are we actually going to try and create with this? So in this instance, we're going to try and create a vagrant style machine. And we're also going to try and compress that machine. And this is where we need to actually push the machine to, or the box file to, when we're done with the process. So this could be on some sort of a shared server if you're going to share it with other people or you could put it into um, Dropbox and you could download it like that onto all of your machines. In a future video I'm going to show you how to take these machines or these box files and host them on Dropbox so that you can actually use them anywhere and you can also share them with people via Dropbox's public folder. So let's take a look at our pre-seed file. Now I will warn you now that this isn't a lesson on pre-seed files, it's more just that to give you an idea of what the preseed files look like. So you can see over here that we first do a include of our standard Ubuntu preseed file and then we also add this stuff into here. So what is this stuff? This stuff is what we need to do to allow the vagrant user to have access to sudo commands without the requirement of actually running or typing in a password when it does the commands. This just means that the vagrant, vagrant user will have root privileges on the server, but it also won't have to type in a password every time it wants to type in a 
Come on, which makes provisioning a whole lot easier. So this is the standard Ubuntu preseed file that I use currently. It's nothing special. The things that you've really got to watch out for over here is pretty much this section here. Um, for our Vagrant machines, we have to have a user on there called Vagrant, and it has to have the password of Vagrant. That's just something you need to do in order to make the machines work with Vagrant. That's the default user that Vagrant uses. You could, if you wanted to, change it and then tell Vagrant to use a new user. But if you're going to share this with anybody else, you're going to want to make sure that that Vagrant user is there. Okay, so if we take a look at this JSON file, it is pretty much the same as what we had except for the boot command and our post processor. So I'm going to run this again to show you what the install looks like, but I am going to um, chop the video up a little bit so that you don't have to sit here for ages watching a machine. And at the end of it, we'll, we'll have a, a success statement. And that's pretty much what you're looking for. And then in the next video, we're going to do the last section where we are going to talk about getting the scripts in, which will actually make your machine usable. Remember that this section is only going to get you a Ubuntu machine that's installed, but it hasn't yet been configured for a full lab. So we're going to use the same commands again. Packer.exe validate. Okay, our template is valid. And now we're going to build it. So you can see, same same as last time, Packer's going to bring up our virtual machine, going to start installing, and now I'm just going to speed it up and chop the little bits out that are really boring so that you don't have to watch it. And as you can see, we've had a successful build done. Pack has kindly told us that it's put the box file over here. So if we were going to use this one, we could just go off and go scoop that up and put it where we need to be. Now, this task of building machines can be quite CPU intensive. So if you've got a machine that's got a bit of a crummy CPU, I'd suggest getting something that's a bit decent to run your machines on, especially if you're going to be doing multiple of them. But for this video, we're done. So like I said, in the next video, we're going to look at actually getting machines into a usable state where we can use them for our labs. So I'll see you in the next video.